A myth is something that, while widely believed to be true, is in fact false. And one of the great myths in our country is this idea that, honestly, we can't solve criminality with policing. Honestly, what we really need to do is get the community together, build a rec center, do midnight basketball, have activities for these teens to do in order to prevent the criminality from happening. Now, what these people often don't realize, or maybe they just are willfully blind to, is the fact that even the activities that are supposed to get kids out of trouble, even the community events and organizations, are victimized by these criminals. And the first step, if you want to have nice activities for the kids, if you want to reduce violence, is not to deploy the social workers, is not to invest in the community, which is just government wasting money on stupid projects. It is to get the percentage of criminals, those predators that are repeat offenders, that are responsible for a huge portion of the crime, off the streets. You cannot function if you allow criminality to go unchallenged. You have to directly attack the problem of those people who are not fit to be in society. They're not functioning members of society. Remove them before you try to build anything. And a perfect example of what we're going to talk about, which by the way, is in line with a long string of crimes that of course are becoming more popular nationwide, catalytic converter thefts, is what happened to the Boys Club in Nevada, one of these organizations that is supposed to deal with the community that's supposed to get those boys energized and redirected to activities because, of course, they have been victimized by the criminality that we have allowed to go unchallenged in our country, just like everyone else. Now, we're going to go to the local news. They're going to set it up for you, and I'm going to explain what's really going on in this country. But first, there's no sponsor for this video. Again, my members over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join, you are the ones who made this possible. And by the way, you get early access to my videos if you sign up over there on the secret video page. I post very frequently, have been doing a daily schedule if you haven't noticed. So if you want to, go sign up. 14-day free trial. You can get this early access and all that and then cancel if you are so inclined. But hey, you might like it, so stay on board. Anyway, let's roll into the segment. Catalytic converter theft is the problem really growing across the valley. We thank you for joining us at 11. I'm Brian Loftus. Now, the city of North Las Vegas considering new ways to stop the crime. No one seems immune to it. In fact, a local Boys and Girls Club even falling victim. Now, I don't mind the way that the local news set this up. I know occasionally I've been one to make fun of the local news, but they are describing what is going on in their local municipality. But I need to make it clear from the jump that we are not talking about something that is contained to the city of Las Vegas. Catalytic converters are being stolen across this country, and that is because they have precious metals that are incredibly valuable, and now they're being targeted, and we've also passed a series of soft-on-crime legislation that lowers the consequences for thefts like this. You know, all this talk about how, oh, it's not a violent crime, don't worry about it, these aren't violent criminals. Well, it disregards the fact that these are victim crimes, that there is a victim in this. We should be concerned with crimes that have victims versus victimless crimes. And my go-to example that really cuts to the core of this is the fact that Bernie Madoff, as far as I know, never cracked anybody's skull, never punched anybody in the face, but the fact is, what he did ended up hurting thousands of people, caused suicides, ruins lives, and again, just because his crime wasn't violent doesn't mean it's not serious. And by the way, the people who are stealing these catalytic converters, go catch them in the act and see how quickly they'll turn to violence. So that's what's going on in this country, and it happened specifically to a boys club out of Vegas, and you just have to see what they're dealing with and how they have to respond because law enforcement refuses to respond not only in Las Vegas but nationwide. Brian, those who I spoke with here at the Boys and Girls Club say they're glad to hear something could be done about this. They say they spent way too much time and money dealing with these catalytic, catalytic converter thefts. We just can't afford to keep doing it. Andy Bischel shares his frustration over a rash of catalytic converter crime. I don't want it to happen anywhere, but I just really don't want it to happen here. I understand what this guy is saying. And by the way, a lot of regular people don't feel very comfortable on camera. But I do find it funny that he leads off with, I really wish this wasn't happening, but especially not to me. Believe me, bro, 
I feel you on that. I really don't want robberies to happen, but least of all, I want myself to be robbed. I get it. It's funny. Again, not too serious at this moment, but the fact of the matter is they are stealing from the Boys and Girls Club. These vans are labeled Boys and Girls Club, and this prevents them from being able to actually go out into the community, pick up the boys and girls that are a part of the club, and help them have activities and something to do, aid the parents, and all the things that, that this nonprofit does. And by the way, when I was a kid, for a brief period of time i was actually a part of the boys and girls club it actually is pretty nice now there's some problems with it and all that but again it's a good organization or at least it's a well-intended organization but when i was a kid we didn't have to deal with the fact that when we went to go on a trip our catalytic converters were completely missing they were stolen but again just hear what he has to do now in response to the thefts because there's nothing being done in order to deal with it. As president of the Boys and Girls Club of Southern Nevada, he says their West Valley location has had multiple units stolen over the past year. They know they're stealing it from the Boys and Girls Club. That's that's the kind of disturbing part for me. In all, they've spent about $25,000 on repairs and protection for their vans, and they even started parking them inside the gym at night. That's right. It is so bad over in the city of Las Vegas. They have been victimized time and time again that they have not only spent over $25,000 on repairs for their vehicles just so they can actually serve the community, but they're actually parking the vehicles inside the gym at night because this is the only tangible solution. Now, of course, eventually this is going to escalate to the point where they're breaking into the gym and stealing those catalytic converters because they just put it on the news that they're all inside. But it just goes to show you how we're unraveling as a society all due to the fact that that post the George Floyd Black Lives Matter riots, a bunch of these places decided to pass some soft on crime legislation and we're all dealing with the consequences. Again, this is not a consequence of poverty. This is not a consequence of the Great Recession. In the 2009 Great Recession, largest since the Great Depression, all of these poverty causes crime, poverty's the big driver, inequality and all that jazz kind of people predicted a crime wave. That crime wave did not happen. It did not occur because we were still in the midst of actually implementing laws that treated criminals with the disdain that they deserve and again what are we saving these people for why are we appreciating them they are targeting the boys and girls club of america robbing them of catalytic converters just so they can make a quick buck off of the precious metals and you're going to see the video obviously you can see by the pictures of the vans that everybody knows what these vans belong to but we're supposed to pretend like this is normal we're supposed to pretend like the victims in this scenario aren't the nonprofit and the kids that they serve they're actually the aladdins that pull up in a luxury vehicle in order to yank the catalytic converter off <laughs> Catalytic converter thefts continue to be a huge problem across the valley. Metro Police saw around 1,900 cases in 2021, and 156 have been reported in North Las Vegas so far this year, a 28% jump. Now, there are some places, like the state of New York, that have tried to address this problem by making catalytic converters have to have serial numbers imprinted on them. And again, this is just an additional cost that is done by the manufacturer that gets passed down to the consumer because we all pay for theft. We all pay for criminality. Now, of course, what they didn't do was actually make it so that if you steal catalytic converters, you spend a day in jail, you still get automatic release in the state of New York. But again, this is a nationwide thing and it's due in large part to the fact that we have broadened what is acceptable in terms of theft, so we have an organized criminal operation in order to steal these catalytic converters for the precious metals. And again, it's not like your car can function without these things. It's not like this harms you only a little bit. This is a serious thing. This is a serious problem. And again, it is destroying this community organization that supposedly during times of great economic strife is what we should be supporting. But the fact of the matter is, we're not doing it because we're far more concerned as a society as a whole with pretending that criminals are actually good, kind-hearted people that just need to talk to a social worker. Again, send in a social worker when somebody's removing the catalytic converter from your car and see what happens to them. What these people need is police. What these people need is consequences. If they are organized, they need to be charged as organized criminals, and we need to have zero tolerance for this kind 
of behavior. You know, before the George Floyd riots, we had a lot of problems with COVID. We had a lot of problems with lockdown. We had a lot of problems that supposedly were going to lead to this great spike in criminality. But it was weird how it wasn't until we started releasing all these people from prison and we started lowering the consequences for thefts like this that we didn't see the dramatic spikes in thefts. And now as we come out of the pandemic, as things theoretically get better as jobs are offering more money due to a labor crunch now we're seeing more and more thefts a 30 percent increase from 2021 in just this area of those 1900 catalytic converters stolen in metro's jurisdiction we're told only 98 arrests were made last year now typically thefts have the lowest clearance rate that is just the nature of the beast but it is still depressing to hear that there are only 98 arrests in around 2,000 catalytic converter thefts that they experience, a 5% clearance rate. However, I do need to give the caveat, and you guys do need to understand, that a bunch of those people in the 98 arrested are people who likely stole more than one catalytic converter. So they're likely responsible for more of these crimes. And this is because this crime has become very popular. Again, we lowered the consequences for criminality for thefts in this country, and we are seeing the consequences of that. And that has led to organized thefts. But one of the things that we should definitely do is make sure that you have to keep a record. You have to show ID when you're a parts store or whatever and you're buying a catalytic converter. We have to track down the precious metals. Identifying these catalytic converters, also a good thing. I mean, these are the steps that we have to take. But that's because if this is a new type of crime or a crime that we weren't experiencing anywhere near us frequently, and we need to take actions to combat it. On top of that, we need actual genuine consequences. If you have one of these left-wing district attorneys, these woke DAs that think that all criminals are Aladdin and don't want to do anything, then you know what? You got to do something about them. You got to get them out of office. You got to put the pressure on them because the people who are being affected by this the most are organizations and individuals that can can't afford to deal with this. I got news for you. A lot of the wealthy people can afford a home. A lot of those wealthy people can park their car in their garage, have it safe and secure and off the streets. The people who are actually suffering the consequences of this don't have that luxury. Now, many states have already passed laws trying to curb these crimes. The Nevada legislature is set to hear at least one bill related to catalytic converter thefts coming up next year. And the idea that in Vegas or in the state of Nevada, you would see this play out over and over again, and you're still not even going to consider a bill to address this until next year is absurd. And what's doubly absurd, and we're probably going to do a whole separate video on this, is that the lame duck Democratic governor is actually trying to commute every single sentence from death row to life in prison, and that's his number one priority as he's going out the door. Again, we're putting the criminals first in our society, not looking out for everyday citizens, and wondering why the everyday citizen is getting screwed and the criminal is allowed to prosper. So yeah, that's what's on the priority list in the state of Nevada. Good on them for throwing the governor out. He definitely did not deserve to be there. But yeah, until next year, you're just going to have to deal with all these catalytic converter thefts. And you're just going to have to hope that you have a gymnasium in order to park your vehicles. And hope, of course, that these people don't break into that gym in order to target all of your catalytic converters. Look, it's rough. It sucks. I hate it. But that's where we're at in this country until you out there decide to put pressure on your representatives, decide to vote the correct way, decide to force them out and actually fight back against the criminals. We need to change this mindset from blaming everybody but the criminal to focusing solely on the actions of the criminal and treating them with the disdain that they absolutely deserve. But hey, those are just my thoughts. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, you show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. You can support me via the support links, which are not just my website in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about the mass catalytic converter theft. Till next time.